<laughs> Sorry, I get really nervous. That's really good. Uh, well, my name is Alex Aldana, and I'm undocumented and afraid and queer and unashamed. And I never get tired of saying this because this is the, the time, you know, of, of my life when I can truly say it without remorse, without feeling oppressed. So I begin my story actually by saying the Feliz Dia de las Madres. Happy Mother's Day for those who know that today is started. <laughs> And that's where I would like to start my story because it was thanks to a woman that I'm here in this country. You know, I had the privilege of my parents bringing me here, but most importantly, through my mother. She gave up everything she had to give me the opportunity to come to this country. And, and just knowing that and valuing that, you know, what that means is very crucial for me because it defined me who I am today. Um, like I said, I'm undocumented. I came to this country when I was 15 years old. So my perspective of, of being an American or being an immigrant was completely different. Um, you know, from the zero, that I was going to be undocumented at some point. I flew with a visa and then a permit. So I had also that privilege of applying. Um, I always had it really difficult, not only adapting to the culture, to the language. Even to this day, I still carry my accent, which I'm very proud of having. Um, but I was exposed to other things, such as discrimination, racism, things that I, and where I came from, from Mexico, I wasn't really aware. Um, so I began, you know, the, the American dream, and, and right away I realized that it was more of a cage, it was more of a prison, you know, like, I was constantly reminded that I, I was, I had to be afraid of the cops, I had to put my belt, you know, because we could get deported, you know, or my dad was going to be expelled by the cops. Um, not only I had that oppression with society where I live, but also within my own family, being queer, being gay, you know, that was something that I was constantly reminded, you know, my, my dad would tell me, don't go to school, stop doing the gay thing, you know, you need to come back to work, you know, to contribute to the family, you need to get a job, and that's what I'm meant to do, you know, so I was just, okay, I'm just trying to get an education, and then he wasn't really supportive of that, so I had to, I had to step it up, I had to empower myself every single day, of, of this immigrant life that I lived um, until the day that um, my mom, you know, like she was, she was always um, treated really bad by my dad. And we know this in the Latino culture that always that is machismo, it's always very controlling. And, and my dad wasn't only controlling on that, he was actually abusive, not only verbally but physically something that I lived with as I was raised and and it increased, you know, when we come to this country, um, he wouldn't allow my mom to work. He didn't even allow my brother to go to school. Um, he was 17 at the time. So just knowing that the fact that when it came to the, when the time was right and, and my mom couldn't hold it anymore, she put a stop, she put an end to that domestic violence and she said enough is enough. You know, I cannot, I cannot, you know, be treated like this. I, I'm a woman and I have rights. And, and she actually saved my life with that. Because my dad was abusing me as well. Um, she, he, he used to hit me for no reason. There was a point when, when he tried to kill me. It, was, it got really crazy. He was drunk. But um, just knowing that, thanks to her, I constantly had to come out of the shadows and, and acknowledge that, that, that value of family and, and sacrifice. Um, with the broken immigration system, knowing that my mom was going to be single from now on, that happened eight months after we came to this country. So she lived a very difficult time working two to three jobs, farm working. We're from Southern California, from Coachella. So that's what we have. You know, we're, we're told that, that this is the only thing or the only places where we can give you a job. So she took it. She never said no. You know, they like, get to work. She actually supported me with my high school. And it was very frustrating to, to remind myself that even though I wanted to help her, you know, like papers, what does that mean? How can I get a job? There was a time when I couldn't hold it anymore, so I got, you know, my, my papers on the side. And, and I got a job, and that was my union year. I used to work 40 hours a day, I mean, 40 hours a week. Um, and that never stopped me to continue empowering myself, you know. After I graduated, knowing this dream, what we're fighting for, right? I, I didn't have the option like many of us have of continue with higher education. School was too expensive for me. I couldn't afford four hundred and fifty dollars, you know, to, to pay for my tuition. I that was half of my rent. So and I know it's a reality for for a lot of youth, a lot of youth that 
are trying to 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 achieve a higher education, but they don't have a mother, they don't have a father, they don't have a family to support and pay those bills. That's why I'm here in this walk because I'm not only representing my dream that I have to get a degree to go when the day is right when I'm when I had that financial stability to pay for education, but also to empower ourselves that we have the right to study. That if we wanted to, even if we're not qualified, if I'm 15, I don't even know if I'm going to qualify for the Dream Act, but I strongly believe that I deserve the right to study. And I deserve the right to give back to this country. I've been doing a lot of HIV prevention and education work for the past four or five years, and I'm not, I'm not taking away any jobs. I'm not, I'm not a criminal. You know, I'm not killing people. I'm not a gangster. <laughs> but just knowing that that we're here to give back to the community and that's what we're doing in our own little ways, you know, I think that's something that I take to heart. And then I was like, today I was bawling in the morning because my mom, you know, just reminding myself that she's still undocumented, she's still working the farm field, she's still having another job, and I'm here, you know, doing this walk. Every step that I take is for my mother, and for those mothers that are undocumented, and for those families that are broken, or that they they try to break with this anti-immigration law. So that's just a little about a little bit about my empowerment and what I'm doing this walk. Thank you.